you as a junior, you had so much success, you know, winning two world, world junior championships. You made such a big impact in the senior game. You won in Hong Kong, you know, one of the majors. And then, and then you sort of looked as though you fell a bit out of love with the game and, and you were having a real struggle on the court. Yeah. And that's what it looked like from outside. And, and I just thought it'd be really interesting to find out what was happening for you in that, in that moment and that time and what that battle was. Actually, it was really worse <laughs> from the inside as well. Mm. Like, uh, as you're saying, I was playing a junior, I was having a good time. I was like having won two titles and then two weeks after I won my biggest title, which was in Hong Kong. So I had my, like, I was living my dream actually, mm. winning a world championship and then the next week, the World Series event, it was it was huge for me, and I couldn't really grasp the idea when I reached world number two. I was just really enjoying it out 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 here in the court, and I was really enjoying my time on court playing against top players, really experienced, really good players such as Laura, Ronim, uh, Shirbini, everyone. And when I reached this point, being world number two, I felt so much pressure. I I just wanted to like keep this this level, and sometimes things don't go your way and you have to adapt. I think I was very young to, to understand. I was just frustrated. I, I just thought that every time all the things will go my way and sometimes you just have to adapt. You just have to accept that sometimes things aren't going your way and just you just have to find other solutions. You just have to get out of your comfort zone, uh, work on other stuff. Mm. And Omar helped me a lot during that time. Actually, my coach Omar Abdelaziz and even my fitness coach, we worked on other aspects of the game. Um, I had to work a lot and it was even more frustrating because I was working really, really hard and results were coming. Mm. And uh, it was really tough to like just keep uh, the motivation and uh, as you're saying, being in love with the game because when you can't see results, even like some good results or uh, if you don't feel you're on the right track, it's really frustrating and it's really heartbreaking as well. <laughs> yeah, so what, what about the balance of it? So now you're, you're studying yeah. and do you think maybe there was a little bit too much emphasis put all about squash? So your whole life was all around squash, whereas now maybe it isn't quite so much. I don't know what but you think on that. Actually, I was studying at that time as okay. well. So uh, I think it's just you have some phases in your life where it's like an ups and downs. So sometimes it was my down and I just had to deal with it in a good way to be able to go up again. Uh, study helped me a lot actually because it just kept me away a little bit from squash. I was like, okay, you know what? Squash is not working the best right now. You're still in the top 10, okay, but that's not where you want to be. You're not playing your best. It wasn't really about the ranking or the results. It was more about like the, the feeling on court, feeling uh, confident, feeling that I'm playing well, feeling that I'm really happy to be on court. I didn't have it for almost a year and it was really frustrating for me. But then I was like, okay, you just focus on your study or having something. It's Your life is not only about squash for now at least. So you just focus on your study. And sometimes when you take some rest or you, you're just focusing on something else and you come back to squash, you're like, really looking forward to it, really looking forward to your sessions, really looking forward to hit the ball well. So sometimes this like balance helps a little bit. So and then that, that obviously takes us to the turnaround <laughs> and at the British Open, you were on absolute fire. I mean, it, it looked pretty much unstoppable squash that mm -hmm. you were playing. Uh, how much did that mean to you and what did it feel like? Uh, actually, uh, I had some tough time before, like uh, just after black ball, I was playing pretty well there and then I had my knee injury, so I had to pull out from Eindhoven. And then at uh, El Guna, I wasn't really sure if I was, I was going to be able to play because my doctor was like, you should rest, I think. Uh, I went out there and took the risk and I toured my knee in the final as well, so it wasn't really good. And then I went to Manchester. It was okay, but then I wasn't really confident with my movement. And from Manchester to British Open, we only had for, I think, 10 days. And during these 10 days, I had my final exams and midterms <laughs> to take back home. So actually, I flew back from Manchester on Monday and I was back to Manchester or Hull on the next Monday, like a week. And in between, I had my exams to finish, which were about 10 exams. <laughs> uh, and it was Ramadan as well. Uh, so I was fasting, having my exams <laughs> and have to train for the most prestigious tournament. <laughs> so it was quite tough. And believe me, squash was like 
wasn't priority at that time. I was just having my training last thing. <laughs> I was like studying and then fasting and then having squash. <laughs> uh, and it worked pretty well because when I went on court, but actually my like my squash sessions were really good. It was short, but it a bit was, more focused. Perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was really happy about it. And when I went there at the British Open, I had my mind free because I was done with my studying. So I was like, you know what? You just enjoy every minute of it. You're playing on the glass court in front of an amazing crowd at the most prestigious tournament of the year. It's the last one. Give it the last push. And yeah, I'm glad it, ha it happened that way. Uh, I couldn't imagine it could happen that way, actually. When it comes to sort of an injury, like the knee injury that you picked up, how easy is it to deal with that when you're playing? Because at the British Open, you obviously had your knee brace on and that, that sort of helps psychologically. Yeah. How easy is that to deal with? So it wasn't easy at all when I, but um, thankfully when I put the knee brace on, it wasn't like really uh, bothering me or anything because it, was, it it seems like it's heavy, but it's not really heavy and it was flexible a little bit. A bit like Robocop with yeah. it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like this. It's it's just like two steel plates on the sides, just not to let the knee go like this or that. But then it's 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 flexible, so it wasn't really bad. And I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just trying like to play each point at a time and sometimes when you're having an injury you're just focusing on each shot because you don't really want to run around a lot mm. so I think probably it helped like in my shots to be more accurate or more precise maybe just actually gets you thinking about <laughs> it ever so slightly more what about the the rehab then and yeah. sort of so strengthening it up and then the point where you decide not to wear the knee brace yeah. again is that is that a big moment and and how do you go about building for that and actually, doing it actually that was the main focus during the off season not to wear the knee brace actually to strengthen all the muscles uh, around the knee like the quads the hamstring i couldn't like do any hamstring exercises since i had my knee i couldn't like do my, like pull my 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 leg like this mm. so that was the the main uh, the main focus during the off season i went actually to austria at the red bull uh, rehab center and training okay. center i stayed there for 10 days doing some diagnosis to make sure that the knee is okay and they gave me a lot of very good exercises. I was there, like I went there at 8 a.m. and I go back home at 8 p.m. So wow. I had really <laughs> intense program there. And then when I came back, uh, I just ex executed the plan with my fitness coach Hossam. Mm. And I had like a month of rehab, doing like boring stuff, but <laughs> really you mean not necessary. whacking squash balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like I want to <laughs> run around. <laughs> just, but it's really necessary, and you have to do it so that it doesn't come back and. It doesn't bother you on court and did um, you did you find that you were overprotecting the left leg did you find there was more compensation all of a sudden you were using the other leg a lot uh, because or? i didn't like play on it for a long time i think it was only two months so yeah. like the damages weren't really high mm. <laughs> but uh, no i think uh, but usually as a squash player you use your uh, uh, right leg more than the left so I think it's something normal. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you're on court playing without the knee brace and it's one of your first tournaments back without it and it's a major, yeah. how do you feel about you know, when you're in there actually doing it, do you try and protect it at all or do you feel confident that you've do done all the work and you can just throw it around and do what you need I to? I had this phase like during the off season because we had a quite long one. We had mm. like two and a half months or something. So uh, when I just came back on court just after the rehab and start moving around without it, it, it felt really weird. Mm. And I was trying to put the knee brace again and they were like, no, you just have to play without it. You just So it was in my mind. Actually, there wasn't anything in here, but I couldn't be convinced. They yeah. were like, there's nothing you can move now <laughs> and I was like no no I can feel it I can feel it it hurts right. uh, and actually it's something it's like psychologically and it yeah. takes like some time to get used to it so you're like moving and then you're like oh you know what it's not too bad and then you take your the other step and you're like oh it's fine so it takes some time I think I got used to it like maybe two weeks after or something yeah. when I started playing practice matches uh, and just went with with all the practice matches so, so do you have any psychological things that you sort of do to try and convince yourself or you know if you're saying it's all in the mind is there 
Is there certain <laughs> tactics or do you say the se certain words to yourself or? Uh, I just try to repeat like it's nothing, it's nothing, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> the, the, the physio said it's fine, the physio said it's exactly. fine. Exactly <laughs> and they're like out of the, and actually I, um, like my physio in Egypt, mm. uh, I told him like in my first session to come and watch during a practice match and he was like sitting here and he was like it's fine and I was like it hurts and he was like no it's fine, <laughs> <laughs> it's completely fine, you can work on it. Mm. And actually before coming at the US Open I had like a niggle but not in the same part like in right. the same knee but not in the same like uh, in the same ligament yeah. and he was like it's totally fine I was like no even when I'm working <laughs> it's, it's 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 everything so he was like no it's fine yeah. Uh, so yeah sometimes it comes back but then you just keep reminding yourself and you're, you're having people around you who you trust so mm. when they are telling you it's fine so you know that they're they're not lying or anything and yeah. it's really fine yeah. um thank you ever so much for joining us for being so open with your sort of your, your journey and what what you've gone through and the ups and downs it really is good and good luck for the rest of the tournament good luck Thanks, for the Lee. season <laughs> and thank you very much thank you Lee. <laughs>